to the mystery theory. Today I am covering another national park, national forest mystery disappearance, but this one is closer to my home in Oregon. And I say closer very lightly because it actually happened in the Umqua National Forest. If you don't know, we live near the coast, the southern Oregon coast. We live in the woods. And when I read about these cases, it completely scares me to death to think about it. I've never been scared of bears. We had a serenade last night of coyotes. I might be able to include it here. There are bobcats and all kinds of predators, but those are not the one that scared me. <laughs> However, this is a baffling case that I want to share with you today. And is somewhat recent because it took place on August of the year 2020. But before I start with today's case, I'm going to ask you for a favor. Let's start with liking the video if you're enjoying it this far. Then, if you're new, please subscribe for more weekly videos. And lastly, don't forget to leave a comment. As a matter of fact, do not leave <laughs> without saying hi in the comments. Your comments trigger the algorithm and YouTube gets the message that you are interested in watching my videos and they will send this video to other people, people's homepage, so they can enjoy it too. So by doing those three things, you're helping my channel, and for that, I thank you. Some people ask me, what do I comment? You can say hi, <laughs> and I'd love that. You can comment about the case. You can say where you're watching from, or just leave an emoji. It's cute, it's fast, and believe me, you're making a difference. So thank you. Now let's talk 
about Michael and I love when the cases now let me rephrase that I love to give my input on cases that happened in areas that I visited, are familiar with, or live around. And after living here in the Oregon coast for two years, only two years, I can assure you I have some um, knowledge of this scenario and I'd love to share that with you. If you live in Oregon and you have some input, please, I'd love to read it in the comments. Now let's talk about Michael Bryson. Now, Michael Bryson was 27 years old and was living in Eugene, Oregon. Eugene, for those of you who are not familiar, it's a quote-unquote pretty big city. Compared to big cities in the state of Utah, it's not that big, <laughs> but they do have the airport where I fly from and to when I come home, and you have pretty much everything available in Eugene as far as businesses and also you drive down the road and you find ginormous farms I mean there's so much sheep so much cattle I just can't believe how they can fit it all now I think there's only two or three different banks so good luck finding yours but he was for Oregon a city guy but on August 4th which it's pretty hot on the, in August in Eugene he dropped uh, by his parents house and they lived in Harrisburg and he told them he was going with a friend to Hobo Camp campground and that they were gonna go party for an entire week. This might sound weird for you. It's very common. Maybe not in the Portland area, but I can tell you the most kids, teenagers, and you know, Young adults love. There's so much wind that the wind chimes are going crazy. That they go party in campgrounds. I cannot understand it. Um, to me, a campground is where you go to relax, look at the stars ghost stories around a fire but kids get here they grab a four-wheeler 
some music, you know, a, a, a speaker, download music because there's no signal in most campgrounds, and they just go party. And this one in particular was a birthday party. So if kids don't party in the woods in your area, well, here it's a little bit different and this is based on my experience. We live um, our property backs to some wilderness area where there's hundreds and hundreds of acres and um, I can hear them go up and down the road with their four-wheelers and probably some underage drinking but going back to this case this was east of us in the Umqua National Forest. If you've never been to Hobo Camp, it's a small roadside campground and it's described as primitive which means it has no power. Typically, it will have a spigot somewhere, but not water ready, you know, in your campsite. There's probably no dump stations. Um, so it's, it's fine for a few nights, but you don't want to camp there for an extended period of time. Uh, this particular primitive campground is located near a creek and you can access this area walking. I mean, now um, so he goes with his friend to this camp and um, at around 4.30 a.m. he decided to leave the campground. Now, again, this is a primitive campground could have been that he went to find a tree to water or maybe he wanted to find something to eat. I don't have the full story of where he went at 4.30 in the morning because goodness knows that there's not even a gas station open at that time. But here's the kicker. He said he was coming back. But he never did. The party was lit. Let me tell you that much. According to witnesses, this was a rave. That's how they described it. After not showing up the next day, not answering his phone, and quickly realizing that something happened to Michael, there was an extensive um, search Sadly, nothing that would point to his location. Several months later, 
some of his clothes appeared in an area that it was visible from the main road. Now, this was searched numerous times before. Unfortunately, Michael's remains were not there. Police immediately assumed that this was some kind of foul play. What, 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 what could have happened in the Oregon wilderness? Hmm. Detective Richard Smith with Lane County Sheriff's Office said that Michael left his camping gear stuff behind, that his phone was turned off, and that he never touched his bank account since he wandered off at 4.30 that morning. Michael was a pretty tall guy. He was six feet tall. He weighed about 180 pounds, had short brown hair and hazel eyes. At the time that he left, he was wearing a white t-shirt, tan shorts, and white crocs with rainbows on them, along with a corduroy baseball cap that was brown. Michael had several tattoos on his legs, on his arms, and even his ribs. There are some pictures that were taken in the woods at that party. There are also videos that should that portray this party as wild. Loud music, drugs, and 40 to 60 people. There is one witness that claimed initially that Michael walked away from the campsite after he was last seen in a bus. According to Michael's mother, he got upset and walked off the bus and nobody has seen him since. A search and rescue team from the Lane County Sheriff's Office Search and Rescue Search and Land Water Everywhere They called Michael's parents the next day at five PM or the same day I should say at 5 p.m. on August 6 and explained how their son disappeared. Michael's parents 
couldn't believe that it took 12 hours for somebody to contact them. They drove to the area and the parents claimed that people weren't looking for Michael, that they were sitting around drinking, eating, laughing. And the mom mentioned that she had a horrible feeling about what happened to Michael. Michael's father took the time to talk to the people at the party. He said that there were a lot of conflicting stories from the beginning. One story is that he walked away from camp and that he was going to do something quickly and come back. The other story is that a group of people picked him up on the road. The bus story, I mean, despite this helpless feeling, over 100 volunteers showed up to search miles of wilderness in the area. There were SAR teams searching on foot and on horseback, drones. This is steep terrain with overgrowth, dense wood, and this search happened for 19 days. Despite not finding anything but his clothes, this is an active investigation. The sheriff's office um, coordinated over 15 separate searches in two different counties, 700, over 700 hours of paid and volunteer manpower had been logged. And according to Michael's dad, the family never received any straight, honest answers about Michael's disappearance from any of the people that were at the party. It was just commentary. father believes that they know more than they had publicly admitted. The truth is that the stories given by the people at the party are inconsistent. And some people left the day that Michael went missing. But they moved the party somewhere else. The father also said that while many people had left the campgrounds, several friends as well as a few strangers had stayed to assist in the search. I mean, 
His parents stayed for 19 days in that campground and were grateful for the people that did help. Now sadly, the back story of Michael is that he was just getting his life back together after a drug problem. Apparently, Michael was working at a local bar and grill before COVID-19 pandemic started. He told his parents he wanted to become an electrician but that he was always invited to DJ parties and raves across the state due to his passion for music. A little over six weeks after Michael went missing, his parents admitted that they wanted to believe that he was still alive, but deep inside knew that he wasn't. Having a son with drug problems, they knew his behavior. They knew that he would just disappear for a few days, but eventually would always contact them to let them know he was okay. This disappearance act is something he'd never do. They continued to search the area months and months later. They put up flyers at trailheads bulletin boards and campsites. Now, on December 11 of 2020, a call came from a person who believed that they found something near Bryce Creek Road, which is about a mile west of Hobo Camp and between Cedar Creek Campground and Land Park Campground. That's when I they found his clothes that I previously mentioned. This, they were going to go in depth about this finding. These items were found oddly placed near a swimming hole. However, they had searched the area many times before. His family believed that somebody planted those there because they know uh, that that specific spot was already searched several times before. After this discovery, searchers continued to look for clues for a few days in the surrounding areas, but found nothing. My 
Michael Bryson remains missing, and there are no further developments on this case. Guys, this is something that it really breaks my heart. Um, And I mentioned this in another video, um, don't know if it was on Patreon or if it was here, but I was sharing how, sadly, there are double standards and the, I feel like maybe everywhere, but more noticeably here. And I'll share quickly that story of why I said that before, but in this case, I notice going through this research that this story was not only not shared enough, not public enough, no important enough, no newsworthy enough, but also the shame that the parents uh, felt and received while they were looking for their son. It's just completely heartbreaking to me as a mom. I've mentioned before, I cannot say I have somebody near in my family who had suffered from drug abuse, but I do know that there are a lot of younger people struggling with drugs, and in some states that are more religious, it's they're really awesome at covering it. In some other states, like Oregon, they don't have to hide it. They don't most of them don't have a religion or, you know, that kind of compass that makes them feel bad about what they're doing, and this is not the case for everyone. But I find that it's more openly talked about when parents have a child that struggle with drugs. Now in Utah, the time that I live there, talking about your children, having struggles, dealing with drugs, or even legal problems, it's unheard of. Nobody would ever say something like that, in my experience, where I lived in the suburbs. Um, so it's like the drug problem is everywhere. In some places it's more public than in others, but the problem is the same. Sadly, when there is this public information about somebody that vanished, the judgment from people, from authorities, it's really never helping the case, and if anything, make it worse. I can't put myself in this parent's shoes for a second. 
because it clearly breaks my heart to think about people judging your son, a grown man, I understand, but still the judgment kind of overshadowing the important thing here, which is he is missing. He is still missing. I am going to attach some information in the comments down below. I truly hope that Michael will be found. After two years, I can't even think how his parents were able to move forward, to continue their lives with that gut-wrenching feeling of, where is our son? They knew from the beginning, or they felt from the beginning, that he wasn't alive. But is he? Is he dead? I really hope that authorities and people will stop judging addicts. People with different sexual orientations and just focus in that they're humans and they're missing, they're humans and they're dead. What are we going to do about it? I feel like all this is kind of a you know, there is sexual orientation, like I shared on Patreon in the last video, or a drug addiction in the past, or somebody that parties. It, it turns into who these victims are, and not, it overshadows the crime in this. It overshadows an investigation because they're too busy judging the lifestyle without thinking that we all have the right to live. And if somebody is taking another life for whatever reason, like in that Patreon case, a lie, a horrible lie that um, hurt this boy's feelings and made them question themselves. Um, there is no excuse for a crime. There is no excuse for not looking deeper. Uh, so I hope that Michael comes home in some way. There they find his remains. The wind is completely out of control. Hope is snoring. I mean, that's my effect, apparently. But if you're still here, share your thoughts down below. If you don't agree, you don't have to. I always say we're all adults here and we can agree to disagree. But I always encourage a good conversation 
and opinion. We're all entitled to them. But in this case, I think that the opinions on the side of the authorities, on the side of a judge, on the side of a jury, on the side of a searcher, your opinion needs to be put aside and focus on the most important thing. So thank you for being here today, guys. I appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye, guys.